ये मेरा इसमें तो कुछ सेटिंग है ना
specialty hospitals, dispensaries, and healthcare centers, and offering varied services through Banarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Medical Sciences and I Hospital at Kalkaji, New Delhi. Banarsidas Chandiwala Eye and Dental Care Center and Banarsidas Chandiwala Eye Hospital in Motihari, Bihar. Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy runs a four and a half year bachelor in physiotherapy program. BCIP is situated at hardly 200 meters walking distance from Govindpuri metro station. In this ragging free campus of the institute, the academic area comprises of state of the art infrastructure. The classrooms of PCIP are well ventilated spacious and air-conditioned, equipped with all modern facilities and audiovisual aids. The exercise therapy lab has various gadgets like shoulder wheel, finger ladder, wall bar, parallel bar, suspension apparatus, Swiss balls, therabands and theratubes, wobble boards and many others. The electrotherapy lab has various equipments like shortwave diathermy, ultrasound, mechanical traction, multi-stimulators, paraffin wax bath, hydrocolator packs, infrared lamp, ultraviolet lamp, and many more modalities for students to practice. The biomechanics lab is a specialized research lab with its unique gait and motion analysis system, EMG biofeedback unit, and other facilities. Manual therapy lab promotes basic infrastructure for assessment and conduction of manipulation and mobilization techniques for joint and soft tissues. The research lab. It is also designed to facilitate appropriate environment and equipped with the latest modalities and tools to carry out research activities with EMG biofeedback and evoke potential unit, electronic pen and maze for sensory integration, dynamometer to measure muscle strength, vestibular rehabilitation aids, and hand re-education tools. The physiology lab is well equipped to conduct practicals on hematology, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, and nervous system. Anatomy lab provides the students with state-of-art models, charts, skeleton, and specimen to practice the minute details of anatomy. This lab has ample number of bones for the students to observe and practice. The lab is also having anatomy museum of human body parts. BCIP has a Wi-Fi enabled campus and a computer lab with dedicated lease line for internet utilization which facilitates the students for their curriculum and projects. The physiotherapy clinic run by the institute has various assessment, diagnostic and treatment modalities for the patients. The modern equipments for fitness, fat analysis, lung function testing, digital balance assessment and various others for pain management and rehabilitation makes us one of the best training centers for the physiotherapy students. The primary repository of learning and knowledge at BCIP is the library with over 3,000 books on physiotherapy, medical subjects and related areas besides a large collection of newspapers, magazines, national and international periodicals and journals. 
BCIP also has a modern auditorium for students all round development in different aspects. There is an in campus canteen an area for relaxation and rejoicing for the students. The campus also has hospital facility and health services. Hostel facility is also available for both boys and girls separately. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Neha Kashyap, Assistant Professor of Anasidas Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy. I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all present here for the celebration of World Physiotherapy Day. World Physiotherapy Day is celebrated every year on 8th September. The day is an opportunity for physiotherapists from all over the world to raise awareness about the crucial contribution the profession makes in keeping people well, mobile and independent. The focus for this year's World PT Day is rehab in long COVID and the role of physical therapists in the treatment and management of people affected by it. Long COVID is affecting at least one in 10 people. Symptoms of long COVID can exhibit for a period of 12 weeks and longer. COVID, since it's a multi-system disease and its, system, and its symptoms are highly variable in different individuals. A physical therapist can help people living with long COVID as part of a rehab program and make sure exercise prescriptions is approached with care to minimize risk and to ensure exercise programs are restorative and do not make an individual system worse. Thank you so much all of you for joining us in our celebration. Now, I would like to request Dr. Nidhi Kalra, our officiating in charge, to deliver the welcome note. Very good afternoon to the respected dignitaries, my colleagues, and all the delegates and students. I wish you all a very happy World Physiotherapy Day. This day is an opportunity for physiotherapists to raise awareness about the crucial contribution the profession makes to keeping people well, mobile, and independent. This year, focus is on promoting the role of physiotherapists and rehabilitation in the treatment and management of people affected by long COVID. Long COVID, which is also known as post-COVID-19 syndrome, post-acute sequelae of COVID-19, chronic COVID syndrome, or even we know it as long-haul COVID, is a condition which is characterized by long-term sequelae appearing or persisting after the typical convalescence period of coronavirus disease. Long COVID can affect nearly every organ system with sequelae including respiratory system, disorders, nervous system, and neurocognitive disorders. Mental health disorders, metabolic, cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, and it, it, it is seen that it is mainly leading to fatigue or post-exertional syndromes. It is even affecting the people who were anemic or, were, or had other uh, you know, comorbid conditions. It has been observed that one in every 10 patients is exhibiting the symptoms that are lasting for more than 12 weeks. In some of the cases, it has been reported to, ha to have been extending till one year or more than six months. 
And the best thing is that physical therapy is playing a crucial role in managing these symptoms. In these findings, we devised our webathon, a, a week-long webathon that is targeting different populations from pediatrics to geriatrics. We, have, we are covering mental health issues, nutritional issues, and even how the athletic performance got affected due to COVID-19. This we ran, uh, we already had two of our webinars yesterday and day before yesterday, and we witnessed a good delegation, good participation from all over the country. It is important to understand that how physiotherapy can help by using pacing as an activity management tool. We physios can help people by making them understand their energy reserves and how to use them wisely and effectively. And I'm proud to share that we all have been fighting with the disease as well as its complications very successfully. We can not only help in improving physical capabilities, but are also dealing with managing the mental health issues. We are not just dealing with the physical illnesses, but also the cognitive impairments that are happening. On this note, I would like to thank my organizing team who are working hard to reach masses through this well-crafted webathon. I, th I thank our management, especially our vice chairman, sir, Mr. Vipul Gupta, whose guidance and support for this program has been immense, without whose support this program would not have been possible. My gratitude to today's chief guest, Dr. Agarwal, President, Delhi Council for Physiotherapy and Occupational Therapy, and our guest of honor of the day, Dr. Sudeep Kale, President, Maharashtra Council, who have been working relentlessly for the betterment of the profession and community. On this note, I again welcome you all on this session of today, which is dealing with women health, navigating pregnancy during long COVID or during COVID. So I welcome you all for today's session and again wish you a very happy World Physiotherapy Day. I hope we all recognize our efforts and become a successful physiotherapist. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank all the Corona warriors who have been working day and night in bringing change to the people's lives. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy today's session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nidhi ma'am, for your kind words. Now I will play our trust's video. We are highly thankful for our trust for giving us this opportunity to celebrate the World Physical Therapy Day. Chandiwala Seva Smarak Trust Society Sri Banasidas Chandiwala Seva Smarak Trust Society was founded by Rich Krishan Chandiwala Ji who was a freedom fighter and a close associate of Mahatma Gandhi Rich Krishan Ji was born in the year 1900 in a highly regarded Chandiwala family 
who were silver traders in Chandni Chowk in Delhi. He was educated at St. Stephen's College, Delhi, where he happened to meet Bab for the first time in 1918. His meeting with Babu deeply influenced Brij Kishanji and he became his ardent follower and a close associate. Brij Kishanji took to meager meals and to wearing khadi under Gandhi ji's influence. He would not use any mattress but would sleep on rugs. He used to spin khadi on spinning wheel and would wear clothes made from that yarn only. Though a prolific writer, but he was frugal with the usage of paper and would make sure to use it till its last bit. While in Delhi, Gandhi ji used to often stay at Chandiwala's Haveli at Katra Khushal Rai. He was also there in 1924. where he observed his 21 day long fast for communal harmony during the 1930s brij krishan ji helped organize the stone breakers of delhi into a union took up cases of violation of their rights with the delhi administrators and in courts of law to ensure better compliance of government regulations regarding their work and to get compensation for them so he was asked by bapu not to participate in salt march in 1930 but he quit eating sugar and salt after that and did not do so for more than 50 years until mandated by his doctors rich krishan ji was with gandhi ji on the day of his assassination and it was he who prepared gandhi ji's body for cremation brij krishan ji's devotion for bapu had no bounds he authored a three volume book gandhi ji ki delhi diary which chronicles gandhi's day in delhi the other notable book that he authored in hindi was titled Bapu ke charno me which was later translated into English as at the feet of Bapu he was affectionately called as bhai ji by his associates taking the responsibility of providing human service in education post independence rich krishan ji founded Shri Banarsidas Chandiwala Seva Smarak Trust Society in 1952 in the memory of his father late Shri Banarsidas Chandiwala Post independence women education was a big challenge and of utmost significance and Shri Brij Krishan ji addressed this issue by setting up Janki Devi Memorial College in the memory of his mother Shrimati Janki Devi ji It was started in barracks at Rouse Avenue and was inaugurated by Mrs Indira Gandhi in 1959 The foundation stone for the present building was laid at an off north campus site in central Delhi at Sir Ganga Ram Hospital Mark to cater Central and West Delhi population by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in 1960. This followed by laying of the foundation stone for the residential quarters by the fourth President of India, Shri B. B. Giri. Janki Devi Memorial College is one of the prominent seats of women education in Delhi, and is an autonomous institution affiliated to Delhi University. The other educational institute for girls run by the trust is Janki Devi Vocational Center that equips the girls with vocational skills and paves the way towards their economic independence. Rich Krishan ji was honored with Padma Shri in 1963 for his devotion and contributions in the field of social services. Shri Banarsidas Chandiwala Seva Smarak Trust Society 
runs four professional colleges affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh in the Prasth University. Banarsi Das Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy is approved by Delhi Council of Physiotherapy and Occupational Therapy, Government of NCT Delhi, and is categorized as Grade A plus by SFRC. Panarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Information Technology and Panarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Professional Studies Dwarka are both AICTE approved institutes also and categorized as Grade A plus and Grade A by SFRC respectively. Panarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. It is an AICTE approved and NAC accredited institute and also categorized as Grade A plus by SFRC. Furthering the other mission, Health, the Trust Society is running multi speciality hospitals, dispensaries, and healthcare centers and offering varied services through. Banarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Medical Sciences and I Hospital at Kalkaji, New Delhi. Banarsidas Chandiwala I and Dental Care Center, Jama Masjid. And Banarsidas Chandiwala I Hospital in Motihari, Bihar. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Manvi Rajput, student of BPD fourth year. I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our guest of honor of the day, Dr. A.K. Agarwal, sir. Sir is running a little late due to emergency, so he will be joining us shortly. It is a great honor for me to introduce and welcome the chief guest of this startlingly beautiful event, Dr. Sudeep Kale. Sir is president of Maharashtra Council of Occupational Physiotherapy Council. He is ex-executive council member of Indian Association of Physiotherapy. He is an editorial board of many national and international journals. Currently, sir is professor at Turner Public Charitable Trust and College of Physiotherapy, Navi Mumbai. I would like to humbly invite him on stage to say a few words.
am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical issues. It's my honor to be here for the program which is organized by the one of the Sandiwala Institute, one of the premier institutes of the physiotherapy, which is continuously delivering the quality physiotherapy education. It's World Physiotherapy Day, so happy World Physiotherapy Day to everyone. On this day, I appreciate the services of those who are providing services to the human kind. And also make awareness of the to the community. The field of physiotherapy is now changing. And since last year, there is a great change in the trend in relation to the physiotherapy education and services. The COVID pandemic has informed the entire healthcare system that there are the limitations and limitations have to be changed. And physiotherapy is one of the sec uh, sector which can challenge such kind of limitations. Post-COVID syndrome, long COVID syndrome, which is the theme for this year, for World Physiotherapy Day celebration. That area, physiotherapy plays a great role. So it's a high time. We should also reach to the people and inform the people about the contribution of physiotherapy. It's a time to shift the paradigm. It's a time to shift our strategies. We have to represent the physiotherapy profession in a newer format. The BCIT Institute is always one of the trendsetters in this institute. And I'm thankful for giving me an opportunity to be here for this event and to say a few words on this occasion. I extend best wishes for everyone for today's event. And again, happy World Physiotherapy Day to all. We are proud that we are the integral part of healthcare system of the India. Sooner or later, our potential will be recognized and all such events, all such institutes and the efforts of all will make our profession reach at higher level. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for, for your kind words. It is indeed my great pleasure to welcome among us the alumni of this institution. Now I would like to call Nidhi Ma'am to felicitate him. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sudeep sir. Thank you so much to be present with us today and sparing your precious time. And we are very proud to have you here. He has done a lot of work in the field of physiotherapy and occupational therapy, especially in Maharashtra. And he has, he has got a lot of knowledge. So in fact, if anybody gets a chance to, you know, uh, to get some of his knowledge, then please. And he is very humble to share with all. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure today to welcome our alumni, Rohit Kashyap. Not only is it a moment of happiness and nostalgia for us, but also an opportunity to reflect on our learning and achievements. Our alumni have established themselves as successful individuals in almost every field of their lives. And we could not be any prouder. We are very proud of all our alumni. One such alumni, Dr. Rohit Kashyap from our BPT Batch 2006. He is a clinical and sports physiotherapist working as sports physiotherapist with Indian boxing team 
and ample physical therapy solutions. He recently was part of Indian boxing team as team physiotherapist at Tokyo Olympics 2021. He has also worked as a personal physiotherapist of cricketer Yuvraj Singh. He has attended some major events like Alex Vastin International Boxing Tournament in France, Chemistry Cup International Boxing Tournament in Cologne, German, Asian Oceanian Olympic qualifi Qualifiers for Tokyo 2020 at Jordan. I feel great pleasure and proud to be his teacher today. And of course, the whole BCIP family, the all other alumni, his classmates, and all his juniors are very excited to meet you, Rohit, and give your experience, share your experience with them. I would like to invite Rohit to please say a few words and share his experiences so far with us and in his career. Thank you, Rohit, and it, it is great honor to felicitate you today. Okay. He seems to be a little busy. Rohit, can we have you here? Uh, Rohit, please unmute yourself. From our side, there is no problem. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Rohit is unable to join. Just please bear with us. Thank you.
tayo na. Okay. okay. Hello? Hello? Sorry for the technical issue. We are continuing with the webinar. A very warm good afternoon to one and all. My name is Nitanshi Jain, final year student at Banarsidas Chandiwala Institute of Physiotherapy. Moving ahead, we have our webinar on the topic Navigating Pregnancy During COVID Pandemic. Pregnancy is a special time full of excitement and anticipation. But for many expectant mothers, the COVID-19 pandemic has clouded this time with fear, anxiety, and uncertainty. So in order to make it stress-free, we have Dr. Anjum Ara with us to give some light on this. Dr. Anjum Ara is a gynecologist. She has pursued MD and MRCOG, that is member of Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. She has completed her post-graduation from King George Medical University in 2009. She did her senior residency and also worked as junior consultant in VMMC, that is Vardhaman Mahavir Medical College and Safdarjung Hospital New Year for six years. She is currently working as an associate professor in obstetric and gynecology in ABVIMS, Atal Vihari Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences, and Dr. RL, RML Hospital, that is Ram Manohar Loya Hospital, New Delhi. She has a special interest in high risk pregnancy and gynec endoscopy surgery. She also has various international and national publications to her name. With that said, now let us welcome Dr. Anjum Ara to enlighten us with more profound knowledge on this topic. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Now, without further delay, handing over to you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Anjum from uh, Atul Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Medical Science and Dr. RML Hospital. Thank you for inviting me for this webinar. I'm really sorry I'm not able to share my uh, slides. Can somebody at your end share my PPT? That would be good. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, myself, Dr. Asif. I'll be helping you in this. I'm sharing this uh, your PPT. Just a moment. With I'm sharing your PPT. 
uh, whenever you require for the, going for the next slide kindly ask me to yeah. i will go for that yeah thank you so much so as we all know that uh, our world was struck by this covid pandemic into in the year 2020 2020 and it was declared a pandemic and the whole world was in a lockdown state so the amount of social disruption the anxiety and fear was devastating and you know covid-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of human life worldwide and it has presented and it has presented like a challenge to the public health and the networking system of the whole world so uh, i will be talking few aspects of this virus in pregnancy and antenatal care next please so pregnant women they do not appear more likely to contract the infection than the general population the majority of patients pregnant women those who get this infections remains asymptomatic and if they become symptomatic the symptoms are only mild to moderate like flu like symptoms the main one being cough fever sore throat dyspnea myalgia and loss of taste and diarrhea next next slide please so more than two third of the patients those who get covid 19 infection during pregnancy remain asymptomatic and if they develop pneumonia due to covid 19 it is generally a milder type and they recover well from it the patients those who have comorbidity associated comorbidities they do develop some kind of severe form of infection and they are at increased risk of complications especially if they get this infection during the third trimester like the 7th 8th and 9th month of pregnancy and it the studies have found that these patients are at increased risk of preterm birth and stillbirth due to this infection this uh, covid infection it is not found to be teratogenic that means it doesn't causes any kind of uh, defect in the baby so generally the baby is is fine it is only the maternal uh, problems that leads to the preterm birth and stillbirths though the researches and case reports are upcoming in this aspect also talking about the vertical transmission that is transmission from mother to baby though there are few case reports that have that have shown that there is a possibility of vertical transmission but still the research is still going on and it is yet to be asserted next slide please so what are the risk factors or the comorbidities that are associated with this infection that can lead that can increase the severity of this infection in pre pregnant female asian ethnicity is definitely a risk factor as reported by the various international colleges like uh, rcog royal college of london and american college of obstetrics and gynecology patient those who have high bmi that is especially more than 30 they are at increased risk when patients having pre existing conditions like diabetes and hypertension heart diseases though congenital or acquired patients patients those who are more than 35 years of age patient those who are living in uh, low socio economic status or in the crowded places they are at more risk and we all healthcare workers we are at forefront so we all are at increased risk of you know acquiring this infection because we are in the direct public deal next slide please now this infection has created a 
quite a lot impact on the antenatal care also because during the first wave we had curtailed the maternity services we had uh, uh, just to reduce the nosoco nosocomial transmission so that the patient they may do not get infection from the hospital we asked the antenatal patient to decrease their antenatal and postnatal appointments uh, usually we used to call them at 4 weeks in the first trimester now we were calling them at 8 weeks and in the last trimester again we were calling them at like 2 to 3 weeks whereas usually we call them at you know weekly time period so and we were you, we were we had even switched on to the you know online consultation so uh, there was a fear and apprehension in patients mind and you know uh, there was anxiety also among the patients that what is going on and you know this was the reason that they reported late and sometimes they develop complications in pregnancy like anemia diabetes increased blood pressure for which they were not coming to the hospital not only this there were problems in there were logistic problems also for all these patients like they were they the access to the transport transport facility and the monthly income both were decreased in the families there were no one to take care of them to bring them to the hospital so all these problems which these females they they encountered during this pandemic this all you know and uh, led to a decrease in the antenatal appointment and this led to you know uh, delayed visit and delayed consultation uh, and uh, there was increase that it was found that these patients were at increased risk of developing complication because they were not timely detected next slide please you know there is evidence that the coronavirus pandemic has increased the perinatal anxiety and depression as well as domestic violence in this female it is critically important that these females should be uh, offered support and they should be inquired about their mental health at every contact. We all must have faced uh, this depression and anxiety when we were also locked down in our houses uh, because of the strict guidelines that the government has uh, enforced upon us. But I would say that uh, uh, we should not fear uh, the fear should the, we should not fear of acquiring the infection we can resume our day to day routine activities we can resume our antenatal care just by you know following the uh, the basic guidelines which uh, our government has uh, laid down that is maintaining strict hand hygiene hygiene and wearing a double mask properly not in a fashion style mask and uh, you know keeping social distancing so uh, if we follow these measures strictly i think we can resume our daily uh, day to day activities also and we can even resume our you know antenatal care also now uh, in our hospital also the full fledged opd's have started there is no restrictions so we these patients they can come and take their antenatal care very well from our hospital and uh, regarding the vaccine also, can I have the next slide, please? There were a lot of myths among the, and fear among the people, and they were not accepting this vaccine. There was a lot of fear that what will this vaccine cause to us? Will it cause a COVID-like problem or will it cause harm to my baby? But now the evidence has come up and it, it is coming into the recommendation by the various international agencies that COVID-19 vaccine, uh, COVID vaccine is strongly recommended at all phases of pregnancies, either it, either be it first trimester, second trimester or third trimester. And there are no risks associated with this vaccine. We strongly recommend that all antenatal females, all pregnant females should take vaccination and patient, those who are breastfeeding, they can also take uh, this vaccine safely. 
and uh, there are there is strong evidence that this vaccine does not affect the fertility of a female so patient those who are planning their pregnancy or those who are taking their fertility treatment also they can uh, take this covid-19 vaccine and plan their pregnancy subsequently so you know uh, day by day the research researches are coming up and we are gaining experience with this infection which altogether was very new for us last year and we were quite we as a physician were also like we were in a state of fear but now as we have evolved during this last one and a half year we have seen that there is no need to fear covid 19 infection is not uh, uh, it is not a very severe form of infection in majority of the patient but if the symptoms they deteriorate these patients can be hospitalized and they can be managed very well and at last i would say that prevention is always better than cure so prevent yourself from this infection by taking the vaccine doses and maintaining the uh, uh, social distancing following strict hand hygiene and uh, wearing a double mask for your protection thank you so much for patients hearing anybody uh, if anybody wants to ask a question you're most welcome any questions vaccines can be taken it's like in any any trimester yes the international agencies they are uh, recommending that vaccine can be safely taken at any trimester <laughs> thank you ma'am for enlightening us about this topic in such a detailed way it was indeed a wonderful explanation moving ahead i am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day dr ak agrawal sir sir is an ex dean professor of excellence department of ent molara azad medical college sir was medical advisor innovation education and clinical excellence at apollo hospital sir is an ex president at delhi medical council sir is also correct current president of dcptot now i would like to request our chief guest dr ak agrawal to address the gathering thank you sir can you hear me yes sir great so thank you all thank you nidhi and all the faculties and management of such a wonderful institute and my colleagues from different places faculty colleagues and uh, the management today is world physiotherapy day and uh, i know it very well that when we talk about the world physiotherapy day that means there has to be a global standard of physiotherapy not within our country but it is practically throughout the globe and when we talk about uh, throughout the globe that means there is uh, the platform of best practices best technology best skilled manpower and the best brain and at the same time i know that the india is not at all lucky india is a, is in forefront as regard to the safety and that is what i have felt whenever i have visited i'm sorry i am not able to visit your institute today but whenever i have visited your institute i feel the best in india and the best practices are being there 
at the same time what is expected from us is to create best possible sops and those sops can be created by experience by having global experience and have, have having a i always also communicated to my clinician colleague that they should sit down with their physiotherapist colleague because i strongly feel dr nidhi that each and every system as i am very fond of saying womb to tomb each and every age group requires the active participation in the treatment from our physiotherapist colleague i don't think there is any illness where you cannot play a important role there is a very important so it is very important for our clinician to sit down with you find out discuss that in what way we can improve the outcome the patient has come to you for best possible outcome and we have to give the satisfaction the patient safety exactly 9 days after today we are going to celebrate patient safety day never forget that whenever we started our medical system we always remember hippocratic oath do no harm so patient safety first then the treatment the best possible satisfaction and that is achievable when our clinician and you both will sit down and try to create best possible sops for each and every area which is accessible by our physiotherapist and again i want to repeat you can you are doing it the areas are increasing and the way i can see that our chadiwala institute is expanding under leadership of dr nidhi i want to thanks her and all the faculty we are proud of her. as president of physiotherapy council we are proud of her. keep it up and very best for the world physiotherapy day and we want to hear more and more news of about your achievement in future thank you for having me back to you thank you so much sir thank you for the kind words and thank you for appreciating us and yes your point very well taken sir uh, every treatment uh, the patient care should be well thought of process uh, of course we should have all the sops ready so that our patient doesn't suffer and he gets the best best treatment possible and yes we must all work together as a team to bring about the uh, successful treatment and successful outcome of the patient uh, and i i must tell everybody here that sir has been always very encouraging and you know always working towards this aim that we all come up with good sops and good treatment protocols and he always works for the community in best interest of the community so that we are able to deliver the best and under his uh, leadership all our colleges of delhi are also flourishing well and maintaining our quality standards uh, on this world physiotherapy day so thank you so much that you spared uh, your precious time i know you were very busy you had a meeting Sorry, and i know I you was had connected a to who I... otherwise i would have been with you at 12 no problem sir we understand your busy schedules and i know even you abhi also you need to rush to one of the meetings thank you so much sir it was very uh, it was glad to have you on our world physiotherapy day today and i feel all the students here would be motivated with your kind words dr sudeep kale was also here uh, maharashtra our Delhi. students are our future yes sir of course right so we yes. are depending on them yes sir we are totally dependent on them yes sir right? to convey my best wishes to each and every student of
thank you so much sir thank you it was great having you thank you thank you bye. sir bye sir thank you It is indeed my great pleasure to welcome among us the alumni of this institution, Dr. Rohit Kashyap. Yes. Hello. Hello. So please take over the session. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. Thank, thank you for BCIP for inviting me and facilitating me. And happy World Physiotherapy Day to everyone. Hello? Yes, are you audible? Yeah, yeah. Hello, physiotherapy students who are there in BCIP and their alumni. So proud to be a physiotherapist. Mm. So what I supposed to tell? Please tell me. I have not prepared anything. Hello? Yes, sir. Hanji. So please tell us about your achievements and what have you learned? Okay, okay. Okay. I am sports physiotherapist with Indian boxing team from last four years. We have just gone for Olympics with the Indian boxing team. And in, in boxing, we have got one medal and we have also treated other athletes also, wrestling and javelin, etc. And we have gone on many tours with Indian boxing team. It was a good experience to represent India in Olympics as a sports physiotherapist. And, 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 and. Yes. Hello, Nidhi, ma'am. Hello, Rohit. It's glad to have you Hello. today. Uh, after some technical glitches, finally, we have you here now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are very happy and proud to have you here with us. So please share about your learnings, about your experiences with all the students and other delegates present here so that they can also feel motivated with your journey. Yeah, as we completed physiotherapy from BCIP college, so their study is very good and we have learned a lot of good manual skills also. After that, I have started practicing in sports field especially. I have started with that. So manual practice zada kari, starting se hi modalities pe zada focus nahi ra, starting se hi manual sikha. So usme, maine Mumbai Kokila Ben Hospital mein kaam kiya, 3-4 saal, Sports Authority mein, Sports Authority of India Mumbai mein kiya, 2 saal, uske baad Indian Boxing Team ke saath kaam karne ka moga mila. Tab se ab tak, Boxing Team ke saath hi hai, aur athletes ko apni sevaayin de rahe hai. <laughs> Of course, we are proud that you are, uh, you know, extending a great support to all the athletes and they are then bringing laws to our country. Yeah, yeah. Without uh, the efforts of the physiotherapists and the coaches, you know, none, no player can actually achieve what they have achieved because their fitness, their injury management is very, very important to bring out the best in them. Yeah. Their performance can only enhance with your efforts. And uh, one thing I would like to mention here, like Rohit mentioned, that manual skills are very important. Electrotherapy is one part, but manual therapy plays a very, very important part. I mean, manual therapy doesn't mean mobilization, manipulation, any kind of manual technique. And of course, the treatment needs to be customized. So I urge all the participants present here to learn this thing from him, from his experience, I would say, and inculcate those skills uh, in yourself so that you also become one of the proud alumni of your respective colleges and bring laurels to the country. You become a celebrity physiotherapist. So uh, thank you so much for these wise words and advice given to the budding therapist. Thank you, Rohit. And from the, on the behalf of whole BCIP family, I congratulate you for your achievements. And I wish 
that we keep on uh, having you know the uh, the country ke- uh, ke- keeps you for all other uh, olympics to come in near future yeah. and we see you flourishing and you become the responsible person that, uh, yes. behind the athletes who bring gold medals for our country thank you so much for all the efforts i know it uh, it le- you know it needs a consistent effort the perseverance is needed a lot of hard work is needed when you work with the therapist you need to travel with them you need to leave your family and then travel so it is also a commendable job that you always keep your profession ahead of your family so thank you so much for working so hard working with values and bring and i hope you achieve great success in your life thank you so much rohit and it is our pleasure to felicitate you today we hope that we will soon have you physically with amongst our students also for a better interactive session thank you rohit thank you i think rohit has some technical issue at his end oh yes now your screen is working no but he has something i suppose thank you rohit thank you so much we would like to host you physically as well some day yeah bilkul yeah. thank you thank thank you vcip and all teachers also thank you thank you rohit okay we would like to move ahead with our session now uh, we had our intern batch also working very hard during the corona times they were when all of you were afraid scared of the corona pandemic they all were doing their duties the budding therapists they are still not professionals they this was their first encounter with the covid and they did not get afraid with this rather they were very sportingly doing all their duties day and night in in those uh, suits they were drenched with their sweat but they did not leave any stone unturned to help their patient and support the community and our, and we as bcip are very proud of our intern batch who did their best and helped the patients with corona fight who were fighting with their life they helped the patients also their families the mental support which they could give they also provided that and even few of them donated the blood the plasma to whosoever who was needy at that time and i am very proud of all the intern students who in this part did not take a step back and refused to do their duties but they were very diligently dutifully fulfilling their responsibilities so i expect that all the budding therapists also take a note of this and appreciate their efforts and understand that how important we all are to this to our country in during this corona pandemic so we should not uh, feel depressed or we should not be under some kind of anxiety rather we should be uh, you know uh, understanding our responsibility towards the masses and contribute in the best way what we can now we have a small presentation uh, on these corona warriors i hope you would like them and appreciate their efforts thank you so much
Sixth Premier Mandal, Physiotherapist, Kundra Hospital, Delhi. I've been imparting clinical training to interns from BCIP for over 12 years. It gives me immense pleasure to appreciate the interns Shubham Gupta, Mahosh, Anishim Rahman, Pushottam, Keshav, Deepa Mehta, Chetna and Neha Moria from BCIP who are dedicated towards the patients. They have a sound knowledge in the subject and are inquisitive to learn new things. I appreciate the teachers of BCIP who have inculcated in them the knowledge, respect and culture so that they can become excellent professionals. I wish you all a very happy World Physiotherapy Day 2021 and wish that all physiotherapy professionals attain new heights. Thank you. Thank you all our intern batch students and for this valuable feedback which keeps us motivating. I just hope by after watching this even our current final year batches, batch students also get motivated and give their best. Thank you. Now I pass on the session and give the mic to Thank you, Nidhi ma'am. Now, moving ahead with our webinar, continuing the fastest finger first contest, I would like to ask a question. The question is only for Zoom viewers. Rules are, rule number one, the question is only for Zoom participants. Participants have to write the answer in chat box. No other mode is applicable. First correct answer will be considered as winner. Just voucher to okay. Now the question is, how long is the gestation period in human? How long is the gestation period in the human? Thank you. We will disclosing the name at the end of the webinar. So now, moving on to obtain more profound knowledge on the topic of pregnancy during COVID pandemic. Today we have with us our second esteemed resort person for the day, Dr. Aditi Srivastava. Dr. Aditi is a physiotherapist in the field of obstetrics physiotherapy with more than 17 years of experience in imparting childbirth education, labor support, and lactating counseling. She has trained more than 2,000 physiotherapists in the field of obstetric physiotherapy and is the only physiotherapist in Delhi NCR with internationally recognized certifications from bodies like Lamaze, Dona, Dona, that is Dona Dollars North America. BPNI, breastfeeding promotion, newborn of India in the field of obstetrics. She also got various other training and certifications in the health promotion through Ayurveda and yoga conducted by Indian Red Cross Society. Certificate courses in basic dry needling, certificate in upper and lower quarter mulligan concept course. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. So now, without taking much of your precious time, I request you to kindly take over the session. First of all, I would like to thank you, BCIP, for giving me this opportunity to connect with all the physio on this World Physiotherapy Day. I also request you to make me co-host so that I can start my sharing my screen and PPT. Respected host, could you please make me co-host so that I can start sharing, uh, sharing the screen? Uh, Aditi, ma'am, uh, yes. you're allowed to share the screen. Okay. You may share. Sure. Thank you so much.
So I hope everybody can see the screen. Just mention in the chat box, show me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. Yes, ma'am, your screen yeah. is visible. Sure. So first of all, I would like to welcome all the participants who have joined uh, in this webinar on navigating pregnancy through COVID. And in, I hope you gain some useful information regarding various aspects related to pregnancy in COVID. So let's start. Pregnancy is a very special phase for any lady, be it a pregnant mother or her family members. Pregnancy is associated with joys. And of course, it comes with various concerns for various uh, mothers because of many problems which they face. And this COVID situation has only increased their concerns and problems. So managing problems and uh, discomforts in pregnancy, first we have to understand how this COVID situation has changed pregnancy for mothers. Pregnancy anyways is a stressful situation because of many, many health issues and concern, but because of COVID situation, mothers are always under the fear of getting infection. They are always under stress that they might transfer this infection to their baby, there are so much news associated with things going on. So they are always at high alert and at stress level because of this COVID situation, because no mother would like to contact this infection. And many times, not they, but their family member or husband or near and dear one, they get infected or face some adverse condition. So they are under stress in this COVID situation. Their routine antenatal care is being affected. The visit to the obstetrician, if we look at a you know, scenario from a broader perspective where we have mothers in the rural area or Anganwadi also. So in general, mothers have a fear of catching, catching infection. So they try to avoid you know, visit to the doctor or healthcare provider, try to avoid uh, taking investigation, be it a blood or uh, routine thing. They have limited physical activity, which is imposed. Pregnancy might come with some restrictions for many mothers because of health issues or advice addressed by their obstetrician. But because of fear of getting infected or they don't want to travel or to have social you know, distancing, many prefer working from home. So their physical activity has become less in this COVID time. Walking is supposed to be a very, you know, preferred or choice activity or exercise for many pregnant mothers. But again, because they don't want to move outside in late trimester, they are, they are always under the fear of getting infection. So they have tried to keep themselves restricted in the confines of their home. Many support services for which they used to visit to the hospitals and other areas frequently, to physiotherapists to learn exercise, to nutritionists for diet counseling, for childbirth classes. They are now trying to avoid all those things because the only thing for which they would like to come out is for doctor consultation or for very important investigations. Their socialization has become less and sometimes the support of family is also less because in case sometimes the husband is getting infected or in the postpartum period, the care provider, the family member who was supposed to be with them, which they got infected. So, so many things have changed for mothers and always they are under this concern of uh, fear of this getting infection. So many times mother, whether we talk about pregnancy period or we talk about the post delivery period, they have many concerns. So from antenatal period, which is the period of pregnancy or the zero to 40 weeks time, apart from the medical aspects for which of course they have to see a obstetrician who will advise them on the medical aspects related to pregnancy. But all the mother, whether it is COVID or it is not, they always have doubts and you know concerns like how they should change their lifestyle for a healthy pregnancy, whether they should eat this thing or what they should not do. So whether it is COVID or not, these doubts remain the same, but they have uh, increased their problems in the COVID times. 
in labor time also many mothers have this confusion and doubt like if they are having this situation or probably the hospital we are about to get deliver or probably if they are going for delivery and they are suspecting covid so should they go for cesarean or or how things should progress also in the postpartum period they have doubts that if we have covid should we you know uh, breastfeed baby or not and how to avoid you know prevent baby from getting infection so all these aspects we are going to cover in today's presentation so in today's webinar we are basically trying to cover all these five topics first is the prevention how a pregnant mother can help uh, can avoid getting covid infection we'll be covering different exercises few important one which she can do probably at her home if she is not willing to move out management of stress in pregnant mothers some dietary tips or guidelines for a healthy pregnancy and nutrition and how to prepare themselves in case they have a covid uh infection to them or to their family members so let's start with the first point or the prevention it's well said like an ounce of prevention is worth pound of cure and it is definitely true in case of covid no matter how many times we have read and heard all these three things the social distancing the hand hygiene the respiratory hygiene still these points are very important and you cannot escape them if we are trying to prevent infection from covid so all the rules of social distancing avoiding the crowded places using sanitizer frequent washing of hands keeping distance between two people when you are visiting for appointments or going out and all the respiratory hygiene use of masks they are applicable for everyone for pregnant mothers as well as for the general population but there are certain things if a pregnant mother if possible she should practice them to avoid infection if she is working and if she has opportunity to work from home it is advisable for her to opt for that kind of option to avoid you know crowded places and traveling and all those things any travel which is not required or probably visiting to you know relatives or family functions i know it is very difficult but to avoid infection or chances of infection crowded places gatherings functions definitely should be avoided especially in pregnancy as a culture thing more many Uh, mothers are having this ritual at seventh month where every relative is being gathered and some ceremonies are happening so again it always carries a risk of infection and ideally if possible should be avoided with the healthcare provider or most of the time it is the obstetrician right so you should discuss this thing like how many visits they have to you know be in physical presence they have to visit so that they can do a nice check up or if the option of telehealth or telemedicine is available or is it applicable because some pregnancies there might be so many complications that this telemedicine is not possible so option of telemedicine should always be discussed with the healthcare provider or your obstetrician and many other support services like physiotherapy and learning exercises and nutrition counseling or the childbirth education many of these things can be safely done uh, by uh, like online method or by telehealth right the tips related to precaution of covid whether it is about hand hygiene or respiratory hygiene or social distancing not only pregnant mother should be uh, following but all the people who are living with her be it husband or other family member they also have to strictly follow it because they can be the potential carrier of infection for the mother so it's not just about like a day thing it is basically a lifestyle management so this core of covid thing and corona thing we has compelled us to change our lifestyle if we have to carry out with our day to day activities 
now coming to exercises and physical activity because mothers are not going out they don't are not going for walk and they are not really uh, willing to go out and exercise in groups or do some uh, yoga so there are certain exercises which i am going to demonstrate with a video so you can take a note of it and these exercise like of course there are certain do's and don'ts which i am going to explain along with these exercise but most important thing to understand is whenever an expecting mother is advised for exercise she should always and always be ruled out for contraindication so when we talk about antenatal exercise or the benefit of exercise they are innumerable whether it is not related to covid as such but exercising or being physically active or doing yoga whatever type of exercise mother is comfortable with it help her in many ways provided it is not contraindicated for her to do exercises so apart from the few benefits of these exercises like she gains less weight all the pain and discomforts related to pregnancy because there are some problems especially like you talk about back pain the pelvic girdle pain cramps swelling varicose veins pains or aches in different parts of body they are part and parcel of pregnancy right so if a mother is being physically active by doing walk or doing exercises all these problems are comparatively lesser pregnancy all exercises also has a very beneficial effect on the labor outcome as well as the duration so which basically means that mothers who are doing exercises or are active they have more chances of a nvd or a normal vaginal delivery and their labor duration the duration in which, which takes place when the she is about to deliver the baby which is of many hours right it is usually shorter in mothers who are active and doing exercises pregnancy complications especially if we talk about hypertension or pregnancy induced hypertension or we talk about gdm or gestational diabetes mellitus they are much less in mothers who are physically active and definitely they are fit and any kind of activity whether you are she is walking or doing simple exercises at home it helps to increase her endorphin levels also which helps in improving her mood and decreasing stress and it is well documented like any kind of activity even if you are not pregnant and doing walking and exercises your endorphin levels are also much better and especially in pregnancy because the mother is having so many issues related to her mood she is irritable she is having mood swings she is sometimes cranky these are many times because of hormonal changes so exercises and stress relieving techniques helps them to cope them with these problems in a much better way so there are certain contraindications and it's not necessary for all of you to cram the uh, cram these contraindication but it is important for you to be aware so in case if a mother is coming to you directly without being referred so in such conditions she should not be advised to do exercises the source is from acog the list is easily available from acog or american college of obstetrics and gynae website so if they have any heart related problem any major lung related problem or any chance of some condition in which they are prone for a miscarriage or risk of a preterm delivery so all these things prohibit them from doing exercises and in if such conditions are not ruled out properly and you advise them for walking or some vigorous exercise preterm delivery even miscarriage can also happen then there are certain condition which are not so uh, lethal but before you start exercises it's better to discuss with their obstetrician that whether and how much the exercises are to be allowed so all heart related conditions or lung related condition any congenital disorder if they have increased blood pressure if they have irregulated blood sugar level if they are very thin if they are very overweight if they have a twin pregnancy or a triplet pregnancy all those things have to be ruled out and taken care without uh, when you are designing exercises program so the idea of making you aware with these contraindications is you have to rule out so many things before you start them with exercises 
when you teach them exercises or probably there might be some people participants who are expecting and uh, watching this webinar so if you are watching doing these exercises and if while doing any of the exercise if you face any of these symptoms that means there is something wrong you should not be doing exercise so none of the exercise which i'm going to demonstrate on the video should cause any kind of pain anywhere so pregnancy exercise are not kind of exercises in which you are trying to mobilize a frozen shoulder or a jam thing which in which there is no pain no gain no such things don't exist with pregnancy exercise so none of the exercise should be painful in any part neither from head or toe or the part which is getting stretched any bleeding feeling breathless so any kind of discomfort is which is being faced while doing exercise or after doing exercise that means there is something wrong either the technique of doing exercise is incorrect or probably they are not in the right condition to do exercise so none of these symptom basically pain pain in abdomen chest swelling any discomfort or breathlessness they are having that means there is some problem and exercise should not be continued so let me just show you the video of exercise and as we move on with different exercise side by side i keep on explaining because the video there is no sound so how to do those exercise how many times to do those exercise what is the benefit of that exercise what could be the possible harm if not done correctly or what are the important points to be kept in mind while teaching these exercise to expecting mother i'll keep on explaining side by side so the first and of course the easiest of all is ankle toe movement which is not even an exercise we just call it movement but it is again a very important exercise especially in pregnancy the reason being expecting mother are prone to conditions like swelling in their feet calf swelling cramps in the calf varicose veins because of their increased load on the venous system the baby is growing and the legs are being swelled so these kind of problems and symptoms are very common so keeping legs straight moving up and down and rotating in many direction many times in a day so ladies who are working and sitting on a chair they can even straighten their legs and keep on doing if it is not possible to straighten the legs like this because this exercise is demonstrated here on a mat it can be done on a floor or on a sofa it's better to keep the knee extended if not at least keep the leg straight and move them in the complete range also it helps to avoid dvt a condition for which many expecting mothers are prone because of changes in the blood they are more prone for clotting this next exercise or uh, sitting pelvic tilting exercise what we call is again a very useful exercise especially for mothers who are spending lot of time in office or at home in sitting position it helps to relieve stress from her back and avoid back pain so the starting position is she is in a sitting position with spine tall she is not slouching and the weight is being taken by the ischial tuberosities or the sits bone another important thing to take of notice the chair should be straight or firm you can see this is as a wooden base if she is doing this exercise on an office chair or probably on a sofa she might strain her back rather than helping her so flat or a firm surface is very important while she is doing this exercise even a dining table chair is okay but not an office chair or a chair which has a you know car seat kind of a thing the legs are slightly apart feet should be supported on ground the hands resting on the near the knees then 
she is sitting slightly towards the edge she can't do this exercise if her back is supported on the chair she should be slightly forward towards the edge and preferably if it's not a heavy or a sturdy chair it should be placed against the wall or some supporting surface which is not shown here then the movement is she leans backward Excuse without me, moving the yeah, sorry sure. for interrupt you your video is not there oh just a minute i am sharing my screen is it not being shared ma'am it was shared but uh, now it is not visible so you have to share it again please okay just give me a minute you are not able to you were able to see it before not now is it yes ma'am okay let me just see can you see it now yes ma'am okay so should i play from the beginning or should we move to second exercise ma'am it's up to you okay let let's just go through this once again in case anyone has missed so the first exercise which i demonstrated on this video was the ankle to movement the second exercise was pelvic tilting so i'll just explain the position again sitting position in a pelvic tilting exercise with spine tall and feet supported she is sitting towards the edge of the chair chair should be flat and firm base it should not be a office chair or where she is in a slouch position feet are slightly apart thighs slightly apart chair should ideally be positioned against the wall or some supporting surface and then from this position she leans back flattening her back curve and then coming forward so this is basically the posterior movement of pelvic or the posterior pelvic tilt and coming back straight at least 5 to 10 repetition if he is in a sitting posture for many hours during the day or in a sitting job then 3 4 times at least in a day this position also shows the pelvic tilt but the starting position is little difficult as compared to the previous one this also helps in removing strain from the back in back pain also in toning other muscles the starting position is on four position where the knees are below the hip region they are apart the legs are parallel feet plantar flexed the shoulder and elbows they are slight they should be slightly backward elbows should not be hyper extended or low many mothers find this position scary for two reasons they feel their abdomen is being stretched so something is going to happen to the baby sometimes they feel it might uh, you know when we press the abdomen the baby might get compressed so probably they need to be counseled also that this exercise is very useful and the accompanying feeling of stretch on the abdomen or compression they are not going to cause harm to baby in any ways the starting position is this the movement is still the same we just have to move the pelvis posteriorly and then coming to the neutral position so this is posterior movement coming to neutral position 
if this exercise is started very late in pregnancy probably when she has gained lot of weight then they will are not be able to do this exercise because this is a very subtle movement and with so much load at the abdomen they are usually not able to do so it's better to start this exercise in the early trimesters of pregnancy and also mothers who are having pain in the wrist joint or they are having carpal tunnel syndrome or those symptoms or those who have pain in the patellofemoral region or knee pain probably this might not be a suitable position for those mothers again at least 10 to 15 repetitions of this movement or exercise should be done another important thing to remember is that in any of the exercise whether it is tilting or further exercise we are going to demonstrate there is no coordination of breathing so there is no breath holding or how to inhale or how to exhale or how many times we should count the breathing should continue as normal so there is no breath intake or out uh, taking out at a particular movement the important thing to remember is they should keep breathing don't hold breath in any exercise the next exercise which i am going to show you is called groin stretch or full butterfly pose in yoga it is known as if it is a static posture it is known as pose if a movement is happening it is known as butterfly exercise and if we talk about physiotherapy the position is known as groin stretch now again mothers who are having pain because this is one exercise if you go to youtube or any video or cd it's frequently shown that this exercise is useful definitely it is useful but there are certain percentage of mother who are having pain in their pubic symphysis region or the area above the vaginal region or they are probably having very lax joint or for example because of her profession she probably she might be a bharatnatyam dancer so she already has good flexibility and mobility so it's not necessary that each and every mother need to do this exercise so that is why assessment also is very important so you can't just as a you know routine teach all exercise to all mother assessment also is very important which is difficult to discuss in this short time but you should know like majority of mother these exercises is helpful but those having pain at pubic symphysis or they are you know by uh, some reason they are already very flexible or lax this exercise can be avoided but considering today scenario in urban population where we are not sitting down or using in uh, you know western washrooms and not crossing even legs so many mothers have this pelvic girdle or areas of adductor region very tight so this is of course a useful exercise for all of them to increase mobility so this is a stretching or a mobility exercise if not need to be done on a mat it can be done on a double bed also and many mothers might not be able to assume this position the moment you ask them to go get down on the floor they are actually struggling so probably an easier version of this exercise can be used so you you can have a look how to do this exercise hands are supporting behind or sideways the legs needs to be slight she should not lift the leg because that is going to cause strain at her pubic symphysis the hands are held here and try to bring the heels as much possible towards the groin it will be different for different mother because many of them will not be even to do half of what is demonstrated here their knees might be hanging somewhere up here and they are not able to bring down the so idea is not to force them or you know push them that you should attain this flexibility cannot we all know as a physio it cannot be attained in a day it takes time so you have to be gentle and comfortable with these exercise you should not push them to an extent that it becomes painful 
so all stretching exercise especially like this groin stretch or the neck stretching couple of stretches which i am going to show it's not the range which is important it is how for how long they are able to hold that position that is more important right so it should always be at that range that they are able to hold that position it will be different for different mother and like if i am holding like this the breathing should be continued there is absolutely no breath holding in any exercise as i said if you hold this position steady it is known as pose if you flap your knees up and down it is known as butterfly exercise so any whatever is she is comfortable any one you can suggest and sometime if they are not able to fold both knee we advise them with one leg straight and one knee bent and all stretching exercise whether it is for groin whether it is for hamstring or low back it's not too many repetitions that are important probably two or five or three but they should be able to hold for a long time if suspected there is lot of tightness then probably advise them to do twice a day or probably more than five repetition that you have to decide the dosage and it's not necessary that if they don't have time many mother will come with this concern that they are working and they don't have time so a couple of stretches can be done after like dinner while they are watching tv so is the assumption of position is important if they don't find time during the day any time during the day they can do couple of stretches another useful stretch which is helpful in avoiding back pain during pregnancy is the seated hand stretch in all the exercise you will see the legs are being slided they are not being lifted the sole is touching the inner aspect of thigh this knee is kept down as much as possible the foot is pulled toward nose as much as possible the knee is straight or extended and we ask her to try to touch the toe now majority of mothers will not be able to touch their toe because as we all know hamstring is a very common muscle to become tight in all the sedentary population so again we should not push them no you have to touch the toe they can even rest their hand at the leg it's the holding time which is important so as you can see the breathing is being continued the position is being held and knee should be extended toes should be pulled in if they are not in kept in this position the stretch will not be there so she can always rest her hand pull the toes and do the stretch sometimes if they are not able to do with hand they can just use a thera band or a sheet to pull their toes towards themselves whatever way they feel comfortable so stretch will be felt not only at the hands but at the legs also back of the thigh also and at least minimum five repetition it's a big muscle it's a two joint muscle so at least five repetition for both sides should be advised so coming back to the relaxed position so always the sliding hand should be supported otherwise she might lose balance the next exercise is known as cat and camel or cat stretch there are various name for this exercise again the starting position is same what we have discussed on four positions again many mother will complain we are having stretch at abdomen when we move our abdomen gets pressed our weight we will be harmed so all those things does not hold true it's a very useful and beneficial exercise for entire spine it stretches it mobilizes it it tones the abdominal helps in better positioning of baby in the late trimesters the only thing is if they start this exercise late in pregnancy it's difficult to teach because they have already accumulated lot of weight on the 
abdomen. So at least 10 to 15 repetitions of this exercise should be done. Preferably again, not after meal because they will feel pukish or they might feel acidic. So definitely not after meals. The most common mistake they do is they are not able to make a hump and they feel scared to relax their pelvis. So even if they are not able to perform this exercise, even if they assume this position, that is also useful to release strain from the back. But again, carpal tunnel knee problems should be ruled out. Low back stretch is again a useful exercise for mothers who are complaining of mechanical back pain in pregnancy. So starting position is again from on four. And in this position, she tries to sit on her heels without moving the hands. Many times it is not possible because with increase in baby bump, it gets obstructed in between. So legs should be made more apart. So knees will be more than shoulder width apart so that the tummy can be accommodated in between. So this gives a good nice stretch to entire low back, the thoracic region, as well as neck. She should keep on breathing and hold this position like few seconds and then come back. If mat or floor space is not accessible, on a firm surface also they can be done on a double bed also, but it should not be very cushiony. Again, a very useful exercise for mothers who are having pain at the calf or cramps. So starting position is wrist and shoulder in one plane, one foot forward, other backward. Toes should be pointing straight, feet should not be oblique. And important point to note is heel should be down, knees should be extended, and then she'll feel stretch at the calf region. So mothers who are having complaint of calf cramps at night, especially at the daytime also, and yeah, they can do this exercise. And before they lie down on bed at night time, they should do at least five, seven repetition from both sides to stretch this muscle after little massage. So that helps in decreasing the severity of cramps at night. Preferably it should be done bare feet, otherwise stretch won't be there. For both sides. Then another exercise, which is useful because it helps to strengthen the major muscles, the big muscles of leg as well as core is wall squat. So the starting position is either a closed door or a wall, hands supporting, legs away from the wall, back is in touch with the wall and she goes down. The most important thing to remember is knees will always be behind the toes. If knees go past the toes, she'll lose balance. So always they will be behind the toes. So at least 10 to 15 repetition of this exercise. There could be many more exercises, but like, of course we have limited time. So these are the few important ones. 
apart from of course the kegels exercise which we cannot discuss because of lack of time and all the general mobility exercise can also be advised right so these were the few important exercise so let's continue with our presentation you can see my screen nicely can somebody just mention yeah okay yes ma'am sure so now we come to the third aspect of lifestyle management in covid that is the stress management so stress of course is unavoidable for everyone whether she is pregnant or not pregnant or even if it was not covid so it is a stressful time not only for mother but as well as for the husband and the day to day stresses whatever is the reason whether it is the fear of infection or some medical issue it affects not only the mother but as well as the baby so what are the reasons of stress and how stress affect we have to understand we all know like whatever is the reason of stress it could be a personal reason it could be a professional reason it could be a financial reason it could be a very small reason because in pregnancy mothers are reactive and irritable for even small reasons right so they have negative thoughts for whatever is the reason it could be covid or not if they are worried they are anxious they are angry they are fearful of whatever reason it releases stress hormones so body does not know what is the cause of stress whether it is a severe stress or it is a mild stress if you are stre feeling stress the body is going to release the stress hormone so now if you were not pregnant there was no baby there are effects of stress which we as all know like effect of sympathetic nervous system the fear flight or fear uh, reaction so of course our heart rate gets increased blood pressure is increased breathing rate is increased basically to prepare us for emergency situation now even if we are not faced with a life threatening danger but if a mother is continuously having these feeling or uh, thoughts of whatever fear of in getting infection or worried about the health of the baby she will definitely secrete stress hormones and remember these hormones will not circulate only in her circulatory system they are going to travel to the baby also through placenta and the side effects of these hormones or stress hormone will be there not only the mother but as well as the baby so ultimately the circulation or blood supply of the baby can also get affected and it can cause many growth related problems to baby also sometimes babies are not growing properly or iugr intrauterine growth restriction baby is not developing properly and many researches have also suggested that there are many disorders especially like diabetes or hypertension and other problem those have origin in the fetal uh, cycle only so mothers if they are stressful they can it can affect the health of the baby not only during or after delivery but later in the life also so combating stress is very important aspect because mothers are being taken care of you know with going to the best doctor getting the best medicine getting the expensive good quality food all the supplements but if stress is not be being taken care of all these efforts goes in vain so how to manage stress or as a physio or like a general person if we want to manage our stress or a mother's stress what are the simple ways we can do that right so there are basically two ways to manage stress one is psychological measure and then there is physical measure so psychological measure the most important thing is they should talk and discuss it could be with their doctor with the husband their family their mother but it is very important that their concerns or their doubts it could be very small thing but they should be listened and cleared out from a person rather than searching wrong information on internet or various apps or videos it's better to solve their doubts and queries from certified professionals 
husband and family has a very very important role in stress management or the psychological aspect because emotional and physical support like physical support can be obtained from hired workers but emotional support near and dear ones have to provide so husband is of course the key person which will be discussing how they can help in navigating their journey through pregnancy avoid negative news and social media especially when the second wave was going on almost all whatsapp groups and facebook and all different social media all negative negative things were being run on so that can have a very bad impact on a mother's health so all those things definitely should be avoided news channels probably newspapers so at that time some peak situation is going on they should not be you know frequently checking their phones and everything we'll discuss something about affirmations music and visualization of which i'll share a video so all these things we'll do a small uh, demo and a practical then there are of course physical measures couple of that we have already covered like exercises maintaining a routine you know like if working from home or probably even if they are homemaker sleeping at odd times getting at random times doing no activity at all even if they are allowed to do some activity or very simple household chores so maintaining a simple routine if permissible by their obstetrician if they are not on bed rest that is also very important doing yoga walking whatever type of activity or exercise they want to do it's not like only they have to do physiotherapy exercise they might be choosing any type of exercise which they are comfortable with and breathing so i'll be demonstrating again a video to you so all these things which you are seeing in red like affirmations the music the visualization the meditation and the breathing ideally they can be practiced all together also or they can be practiced individually also like she can be just doing breathing she can be just listening to music she could be just doing affirmation or a combination so it's her choice or how she wants to do that so i'm going to again demonstrate a video and before that i'll be showing you some breathing exercise and pattern which she can practice daily for like 5 minutes or probably you know longer breathing won't be possible for like 5 or 10 minutes but the music the meditation the affirmation all these techniques are very useful and they can be practiced any time morning evening at night before sleep that helps to combat their stress levels so just give me a minute to share the video you can see my video so first i'm going to demonstrate some breathing pattern or breathing exercise and along with that breathing pattern visualization meditation relaxation and all those things can also be practiced right so of course teaching breathing in one or two minutes is very difficult so let's see how much we can cover so first she should be made or you should be sitting in a relaxed comfortable posture so we, you don't have to sit in ideal posture you can even recline we keep your feet supported right while teaching breathing pattern how we teach mothers is we ask them that to keep one hand on chest and one hand on abdomen and then we ask them to do breathing and we observe how how they are doing breathing so we ask them to take deep breaths so many mothers will be taking deep breath like this some will be moving both the uh, hands up and down but what we actually want them to have is abdominal breathing like all abdominal breathing obviously but it's basically the deep diaphragmatic breathing 
so b actually wants that abdomen should go out more as compared to the chest which is possible with little focus and concentration right and if you start this thing late in pregnancy when their abdomen has already bulged out it might not be even possible so keeping hand one hand on chest one hand on the abdomen we ask them to keep their eyes closed or open whatever ways and take a breath in from nose and try to fill the air into the abdomen so it's the abdomen which is moving the hand on the abdomen should move not on the chest so somewhere on the navel you can keep your hand one hand on the sternum or the chest of course she is in a relaxed position supported feet should be supported a bolster can be put the position should be like this but not in a supine lying position that is very important that supine lying position will not be advisable for a expecting mother right so she is a high half reclining position so inhaling from nose abdomen should bulge most of the time when we explain breathing exercise we forget that it's not about how much inhalation or the deep breathing they can take it's about exhalation as well so when they inhale a deep inhale and while exhaling then they, this is not a breathing exercise it's not going to help them much. we also want a slow exhale or a slow breathing out so inhaling bulging the tummy out and if we count three for inhale we should acha i am pursing my lips otherwise it is not needed so that you can make out that i am exhaling for a long time the slower the better but this takes time and practice in one go or in just one session you can't even make them aware so usual respiration rate for lies like somewhere 14 to 16 we try to bring it to let's say almost half or probably not more than 10 breaths per minute so that is the idea of decreasing there as the breath pattern changes the stress level also decreases also it helps in better oxygenation so this was one breathing pattern but again not immediately after having food and definitely not in the supine lying position so now i'll share the video this is a small video of a minute but actually this relaxation is a long process so all these things which are being narrated although i have to clip this for almost one a minute but the duration is usually 10 minutes or probably longer so the mother is made to sit in a comfortable position in a relaxed position the environment should also be conducted for relaxation so probably mobile phone should be on silent noise should not be there the light should be dim so all those things are also be taken care of when you are teaching some relaxation right affirmations basically means positive statements so there may be many negative emotions during pregnancy we want to counteract them by positive information so affirmations means a positive statement which can be repeated again and again not only you can speak it but you can mentally speak them or you can even put them in a print so they can even write or take a print out and put it so many places at their room in the office so when she looks at them repeatedly again and again that helps to relax them more so i'll just play this video and also she can you know keep hands touching on the tummy gently caressing and moving hands around the tummy as if she is trying to connect with her baby and many statements can be spoken i'm just Thank you. 
So this was a small demo of that video. And again, we start resuming our presentation. So those things can be incorporated in day-to-day -day routine for mothers, right? So they can spend time, whatever they have in the morning, noon, at night, before going to sleep, that helps to decrease their stress level. Probably many times in a day, there's no harm in practicing like relaxation techniques many times during the day. Also, husband should be taught or probably explained about some things which they can do for their wife, especially in these tough times. They should accompany them for consultation like most of the time nowadays they are more aware. And listening is very important. So if they are sharing their concerns, so probably they are not really asking for, you know, some kind of help. They have already found the solution. So listening is very, very important, especially for husband. Giving them lies massage, not a very rigorous one. Gentle touch also of human touch is also very relaxing and release stress of mother and ask about her well-being probably at least once in a day, right? And physical support, of course, like assisting in household chores, husband or other family member is also very, very important. But probably physical support, as I said, is easily available. It's emotional support, which is more important nowadays. So affirmations, like these are few one, and then there could be many, many, or any special thing or mantra they want to write, it's their choice. So they can keep at, uh, you know, a printout or placed at their room or in, on a desktop or wherever. So many times they are seeing this that helps to release their stress and make them more confident. Nice photos, usually as a culture, also photo of, you know, babies are hanged in the mother of her room. So nice photograph, nice thoughts, nice uh, affirmations, nice uh, mantra, all these things help in releasing or uh, combating the stress of mother. Now coming to the nutrition. Nutrition is, of course, a very important aspect in pregnancy, which cannot be ignored, especially in this COVID time. So considering, of course, we are not uh, nutritionists and of course, we are not there to give the diet chart to, uh, you know, expecting mother. But then there are some important things we should be always aware of. And a couple of tips I'm going to share, which are given by even government of India and different nutrition institute for general population, which as a professional, you can also advise. The common mistake made in nutrition, not only to expecting mother, but for ourselves is we are playing a lot of stress on the cereals and oil. But what needs to be done is whether it is pregnancy or not, your plate, if you divide into different parts or the entire food, whatever you take in 24 hours, including the breakfast, lunch, dinner or snacks also. Let's talk about pregnancy. Half of it should come from fruit and vegetables. So the half of the nutrition 
what mothers need in pregnancy which is being devoid to her because they are we are more concerned in giving her saturated fat ghee and oily thing they are definitely not needed so not more than 10% of the diet they form remember if we talk about calories also in first trimester it's only the 350 extra kilo calories are needed in pregnancy and in the late trimester second or third not more than 500 kilo calories are needed and for overweight mother it might be even less so they don't need more ghee more roti more parathas and more puris they need more nutrition which helps in growth of the baby more proteins are needed more fruits and vegetables are needed and when we talk about cereal it's not just you know like rice and wheat there are different multi grains which are more nutritious as compared to wheat or rice probably so whenever we are thinking about nutrition for pregnant mother or for us we have to remember half of that should be coming from fruits and vegetables so few important points they should keep in mind or we should keep in mind on daily basis right the source is from national institute of nutrition one extra meal is needed to a pregnant mother so apart if she was taking breakfast lunch and dinner she need to take uh, take one extra meal apart from those three meals in any trimester minimum one cup of curd every day minimum one glass of milk every day one vegetable whatever she takes in entire day should be of green leafy vegetable it could be palak it could be amaranthus all the vegetables which have green leaf they uh, consume should be in form of vegetable or salad or whatever way they want to take it minimum a fist full of nuts you know a closed fist a fist it could be almond it could be peanut depending upon economical consideration like peanut might be the cheapest source or even til chikki so minimum 45 grams or a closed fist of nuts should be taken every day two cups of dal or two katori of dal which serves as a protein to mother should be taken and of course like when we talk about nutrition we remember uh, you should remember we are from a developing country where mothers cannot afford expensive thing like non veg or paneer so cheaper source of like protein would be like bhuna chana all those things can also be advised and of course if they have an option they want non veg can also be prefer and minimum one fruit if they can afford more fruits they want no problem they can have three also but at least one seasonal fruit or fruit which includes vitamin c which is a very important uh, vitamin not only in pregnancy for iron absorption but also to prevent, uh, increase the immunity in covid time so the good source of vitamin c is our guava or your citrus fruit or simply amla so it can be taken in the form of chutney or murabba or candy so at least these things should always keep in mind rest of the things when we talk about like oil and rotis and chawal i have not mentioned because anyway we always consume and try to avoid refined cereals and junk food they just add on weight so few things are no in pregnancy of course whether it's covid or not so alcohol smoking and any kind of medicine it, it could be you know simple antacid medicine so don't take any medicine without consulting your doctor even herbal remedies because in covid time many people are you know into taking different different kadhas and different different over the counter health supplement even if it is a amla juice please don't take without consulting your obstetrician and all the general do's and don'ts like extra caffeine or tea chinese dishes which contains msg monosodium glutamate or ajinomoto non veg which is not cooked properly unhygienic food outside food they should anyways be avoided few more things i would like to mention especially in covid time because earlier those were not big concern so anybody who is going for purchasing whether it's mother or her husband or anybody try to carry the own bag and sanitizer and unnecessary avoid touching those item while purchasing handling many people have this habit that they you know keep the food outside in the sun for few hours so that the you know virus gets killed which is not right so outer packet of all the packaged food material either they should be sprayed with sanitizer and then they should be discarded in a dustbin 
बट सैनिटाइजर और स्प्रेड केमिकल शुड नेवर बी यूज फॉर लाइक फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल राइट आइदर दे शुड बी वॉश इन अ प्रॉपर रनिंग वॉटर वॉम वॉटर और प्रोबली इन क्लोरिन दे कैन बी डेप बट नेवर दे शुड बी स्प्रेड विद सैनिटाइजर और सच थिंग नो इवन आफ्टर ऑल द प्रिकॉशंस इट इज क्वाइट पॉसिबल दैट मदर और प्रोबली समवन इन द फैमिली गेट्स इन्फेक्टेड विथ covid because pregnancy is a long journey of 9 months right so in case if that happens or probably it might happen so mother or the partner both of them should be prepared for such thing so it's better to be ready with such kind of a plan in which you know that if this case happens if she is getting infected or partner is getting infected or probably any one in the family gets in infected so how to manage that situation right so always think that how you are going to consult the doctor will she be available on telephone will you be staying in the same vicinity or you can go to your parents house or friends house or rent it so all those options or points should be thought well in advance before like during pregnancy or even if it happens in postpartum like who is going to come for the help in case you know that person gets infected so who is going to take care of you for the 40 days and the baby and how who is going to manage the household chores and all those things so these points can be thought in advance and probably planned also so that basically helps to reduce the stress so few tips which can be useful all the medical record doctor prescription investigation ultrasonography insurance card they should be kept both on the electronic media or shared on whatsapp with a photocopy and all the family members should be made aware that these things are kept here all the prescribed medicine your supplement health supplement or nutrition supplement or routine medicine they should be kept in stock at least for two weeks or so the keep basic groceries in stock you know but avoid panic buying and a keep backup plan for postnatal period like pregnancy is still easy but when you have a baby in hand and you have absolutely no help because it was so common in second wave of panic the people who were supposed to come or to help out expect uh, delivered mothers for like 6 weeks or so they got infected and the mother was just alone the husband was infected and she was just with the baby taking care of everything so keep a backup plan ready if that concerned person is going to be affected then who is going to come for the help then there are certain doubts also in mother's mind regarding covid situation like if covid is happening or something is going on let's say they are not affected with covid so is it should should they go for cesarean or can they in labor be induced so cesarean is not a indication for preventing covid right so because in vaginal secretion as well as in breastfeed at as per research till now it has not been isolated so it is covid is not a condition reason for mothers to get a cesarean they can very well have a normal vaginal delivery breastfeeding with covid because many mothers got infected in the second wave and otherwise also and they faced with the situation and condition like if we are having covid she is tested positive or probably during pregnancy and she delivered so can they breastfeed or not so as per the who recommendation because the virus has not been isolated in the breast milk so they say the mother can still breastfeed the baby but the risk of infection to baby is not from the breast milk but from the mother so if she is not practicing hand hygiene or respiratory hygiene because then baby might get infected so decision mother has to and the health personnel has to decide like would they like to breastfeed would they want to like to you know express their milk and then somebody will give it to the baby so but breastfeeding can be continued even if the mother is infected so questions any questions ma'am no questions oh. still if you have any you can always message it so i hope you were able to got few important points to combat with the covid situation right
थैंक यू सो मच मैम वॉट एन इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन इट वॉज थैंक यू मैम फॉर इल्यूमिनेटिंग अस अबाउट द टॉपिक इन सच अ क्लियर एंड डिमॉन्स्ट्रेटिव वे नाउ so on the behalf of banarsidas chandiwala institute of physiotherapy i would like to thank you dr anjum ara and dr aditi for amazing session so we are so pleased to have both of you with us today thank you everyone for joining the webinar and listening up so patiently coming to the most interesting part of the session i am going to announce the name of the winner of the today's contest so the winner is buddhi praboda congratulations mr buddhi praboda thank you thank you viewers